how did this sweet, thankful little kid who worked so hard for his views turn into this clout-hungry man-child who is on his way to facing an absolute nightmare of an all-out ban on all platforms? All right, let's go back to the beginning for just a quick second. We're going to take a look at how faking stories for attention, including his death hoax, played a critical role in the downfall of his career. It's May 2016, and the 12-year-old Rangesh Mutama makes his YouTube channel and calls himself Neon2K. Back then, he showed a genuine interest for posting videos and a clear intent at making it into something more. The first videos that Neon made revolved around the game NBA 2K, and given the popularity of the game on YouTube at the time, he decided to upload consistently, as he would upload them as quickly as he was able to. It was clear from Neon's early videos that his goal was to grow. Positive feedback from his viewers led to him thinking bigger, and to get over the huge hurdle that is competing videos on YouTube in the same category. Neon knew he needed to be different and stand out from the crowd, so he began experimenting with thumbnails that caught your eye. This new approach gave Neon results that showed promise for about a month, and then had him back to the drawing board as it didn't catch on. Neon had much higher aspirations for himself, and didn't let a setback change his vision and his future as a creator. Yo, my final decision is... No way, I'm not quitting. I've done, I've gone through so much and done so much on YouTube for me to quit. If I'm doing YouTube, if I'm ever doing YouTube, I'm committed to it, okay? I'm not gonna just post once every two weeks or something, but I'm committed to this YouTube stuff, okay? Saying and doing are two different things, and Neon didn't do much for quite a while. It seems as though a light bulb went off in his head because at the time, Fortnite was gaining extreme traction with the likes of Ninja and other creators making it a much more popular game to stream at the time and grow a large fan base from it. Thus dawned the first video Neon uploaded of him playing Fortnite. Is Neon 2K here, be y'all? As you can see, you already know who it is, man. Not one. This is the first Fortnite video he did that did much better than the previous ones, and notice how he titled it 10 kills, even though he only got 9. And although a small one, it's still his first case of Neon using clickbait strategies to gain followers. Clickbaiting his very first Fortnite video tells us that Neon must have done research into how to gain viewers on YouTube, and that was a strategic play that would ironically parallel how he conducted his videos in the future. This was an absolute hit and grew him a new very enthusiastic audience full of people leaving comments such as good job man, nice improvement, and go crazy man, indicating him that he was finally on a path of success and ultimately led to the point where Neon streams were reaching such high numbers at, like this. But you're losing, yeah, you focus. We got 400 viewers! We got 400 viewers! Oh my god! 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 Oh my god, I need to tell my mom! I'll be back, I'm telling my mom! Yeah. 600 viewers! Oh my god! <laughs> At this point, the consistent views, as well as the spike in popularity, gave Neon a healthy dose of haters that were understandably calling him out for the clickbait antics. In response to these haters, Neon grew a really big head, and instead of accepting some constructive criticism, he began to clap back at his haters, completely denying his use of clickbait, and had things to say like this to his haters. What up, y'all? I'm a cloud chaser. I guess, y'all. I guess I'm a cloud chaser now, okay, y'all? Kids want to start lying on my name. I'm not about to get bitched. People want to get their views and start acting fake. And then he has the nerve to lie on stream, lie on my name. I do not care about clout. If I cared about clout, I'll be clickbaiting my videos. If I cared about clout, I'll just be hanging out with people who have clout just so I could feed off of them. Okay? I'm not like you, but bro. But listen, I do not care about clout. Okay? This dude wants to lie on my name and say that I I, I want to pull up on him so I could get views on my channel. <laughs> when I got my little 700, 800 viewer stream, why'd you hit me up out of nowhere? Why'd you hit me up out of nowhere? But I'm a clout chaser, yeah. I'm a cloud chase. Neon got a fairly decent reaction to this type of cocky behavior and started to experiment with raging out at whatever game he was playing at the time to his viewers or even to his teammates with the eventual realization that this aggressive behavior was yet again causing him to rise in the ranks of YouTube. He then started to implement this behavior in every video, pushing some people away from his channel but pulling a much bigger and much more toxic crowd into his streams and onto his videos. All I gotta say to 
toxic neon on the way. That's all I gotta say. Y'all, y'all will see what I'm talking about on my video on Tuesday. Get ready. Oh, toxic neon on the way. That's all I gotta say. Get ready, y'all. That's tough. Neon was a full-on rage bait, clickbait YouTube troll at this point, looking for the next way he could manipulate his audience into watching his videos. I was doing research for this, looking into Neon's account, and I noticed that a bunch of his videos' titles began with the title Ronnie2k. Why may you ask? Well, in 2019, a famous NBA 2k player made his tweet that said, okay, serious question, where did this guy come from who's posting as my son on YouTube? I don't have any children. This isn't a situation where I'm hiding the world from my kid, lol. And this was an unexpected nod that gave him the chance to change the course of his career as his followers were constantly tagging Neon in this video, giving him the opportunity to capitalize on the situation by posting this video titled Ronnie2k exposed me on Twitter, oh my god, where he addressed the video and ultimately played along with the story. Uh, I don't really know how to start this video, no cap, but see so y'all boys probably already know this, how like the YouTubers were putting me in um, like videos and stuff, naming it like Ronnie2k son and stuff like that, and, like Ronnie2k son and like raging making him rage and stuff you already know this all right y'all boys let's get into the screenshot so first ronnie tweets out look at this tweet just look at it okay just look at it and then everyone's adding me under the tweet every single person's adding me because everyone knows everyone calls me ronnie2k son and then grinding df has something to say about it neon about to blow up off of being toxic and then basically what ronnie was saying like like he's like saying what's going on on youtube where someone's saying he's my son i don't have any son i'm not hiding anything from anyone he says something like that and they all knew it was me too because i they i'd be in their recommended or something i don't know so ronnie was like saying like who is it who is my son i don't have one as far as i know i'm a freaking uh, a virgin but um yeah which is like like he's posted on every social media so he obviously wants to figure this out so you know that's a tough scenario i mean I'm, I'm clouded now i think i don't know mom mom am i am i at the top yet let me know the official nod from a very well-known creator indeed changed the path of his career neon began to milk the rumors making multiple videos with ronnie 2k in the title and gaining the attention of a lot of ronnie 2k's followers out of pure curiosity neon stuck to his script of rage bait clickbait and cocky behavior a considerable amount of time watching his sub count rise and past 200k by september while his audience continues to grow but this wasn't enough for Neon as with his head grew his aspirations and he had seen through the cracks of a door to a life he didn't know existed and so he went full on and made a decision that would become the first largely covered controversy that he got himself into. Neon posted a series of videos insinuating a graphic prediction, the first of which is a video called Neon is Dying and featured his brother claiming that Neon had a brain tumor, followed by the second video titled Neon's Final Words in which he did just that. Something to joke around about. You know what's happening with me? It's not something that should be joking around about. You guys should not be playing around about this, bro. This is actually serious stuff that people go through, bro. And there's no reason to make a joke out of it. If you guys are making fun of me or laughing and saying it's fake, then you guys are just terrible people. My channel in good hands with someone else, okay? I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna make y'all stop losing my content. And lastly, bro, I'm gonna be recording a few videos with other YouTubers so you guys can still see me for a little bit until like, like you know, if this surgery doesn't go well, because if this surgery does not go well, I'll bleed out to death. And if that happens, you know... This gathered mediocre attention. Neon's fans had already been used to being manipulated, and so with the third video release being titled Gone Rip with a montage of his best moments, you wouldn't be surprised to see the very next upload was Neon himself saying that the last minute operation allowed him to pull through. Surgery on it, and the options when I took about the surgery was either I was going to bleed out to death, I was going to survive. It was like a 50-50. So it was just a really emotional time and I, I wasn't posting any videos or anything. So the surgery was two days ago. I've been resting, relaxing. Obviously the attention following this response was very bad, given the fact that not only did nobody buy the fake death, but using his illness as a way to clickbait his audience turned a huge portion of them against him, resulting in his first real negative consequence. Neon took the criticism in the chin and recognized all of the coverage he was getting from other YouTubers. So he launched a second channel and called it Neon Live so that he could capitalize on the situation and get more followers. Everyone 
everyone drop a sub on this channel bro we're gonna be having some bangers on this channel drop a sub drop a like to turn on the post notifications but we're gonna be doing giveaways we're gonna be playing so many different games everyone drop a sub if you haven't already man let's get let's it. fast forward a bit because it seems after this controversy he went back to clickbaiting his audience like business as usual eventually gathering a very high view count again and generally keeping his head out of the spotlight this went on and eventually fizzled out as he made the switch to popular streaming platforms where he could take his over-the-top antics he learned from YouTube and apply them in a live setting where the stakes appear much higher and accentuate his type of content. He was able to transfer a large amount of his YouTube following over to Twitch. Doing e-dates and other antics was his new content now, and when he got the chance, he would sprinkle some of his old ways into the new content by degrading and disrespecting the people he was streaming with. Someone comes to your house and you in the fucking head, you fucking hippo, you fat no, bitch. No, no. They finished. I'm going fuck this bad. Like other streamers who went down a similar path as Neon, his viewers started waiting to see him fail. His constant antics led haters to go to extreme lengths, and they started swatting him. You want me to, you want me to turn the camera off? What camera? Uh, you want me to turn it off? Sure. Yeah. Alright, so look, I, I'm live with 2,000 viewers right now. Yeah. So they're just random people. Here, let me mute my mic. That game just called in the same Yeah, I know. Like yeah, I don't know. I don't know who did it. How many cops are here? A lot. Yeah. All right. Pretty much half for departments here. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. This led Neon to make a tweet addressing the swatting, saying, "Just got swatted. 15 plus cops at my house. I'm done with this internet shit, y'all. Got it." Which led to a predictable sentiment as people had a long ago become fed up with his attitude and wanted to see him fail. This led Neon, yet again, to play into the negative attention and to make more content that matched this energy. That's not bad. Don't call them Mexican. You know what your problem Mexican is? Like you let words get to your head, bro. No, because words, words matter. No, they don't. Yes, they Actions do. Actions matter. If I can hold Hey, 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 hey. Come, come on, come on. Punch uh, right whoa, 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 whoa. I dare you. I'll throw you the fucking glass. Do it, bitch. Oh. Did you hear that? I heard that, I heard that. Listen. The rise of Andrew Tate was like none other, and with it came a sort of revolution with Neon's radical style of creators. Tate's rise led to people like Aiden Ross, Sneeko, and countless others to adopt misogynistic ways, opinions on work ethic, somehow nicotine is healthy now, and morals as well as goals wrapped up in a degrading, scamming, degenerate cloak. Neon was introduced to Tate and Aiden's stream in 2023, and at this point, everybody was pretty much expecting Neon to fully be respectful for once in his life. The viewers were surprised as Neon went on to press Andrew after a comment Andrew made. Uh, it's setting you up. Wait. They won't cut no, they won't cut yours off. They can't mess with you. You got a SpongeBob t-shirt on and an inhaler. <laughs> They're scared of you, G. Don't worry about that. You just showed up and you tell them who's boss. You tell them. That's right. You tell them. You say you're a streamer and you you're play video games all day. You let them know who the man you. is. You let them know who the man is. You, you bitch. Fire and house arrest, you pussy. You yeah. fucking loser. You and your dirty ass fat brother. Fuck him too, dumb bitch. Look at you just sitting there, you bald refugee. Fuck you. All right, hold on, hold on. At that time, anything with Andrew Tate's name or face was going viral. So when this clip of Neon and Andrew Tate went super viral yet again, boosting him to the spotlight and pushing him to new corners of the internet that he had never been to, Neon was on a path of destruction and felt invincible as every controversy he was involved in, he emerged out on top of. At this point, Neon had faked and lied his way to fame. And when faced with the choice to make a video of fake when it didn't need to be, he would always choose fake. And so when he posted posted this video, he was in for a rude awakening when his fans weren't buying it. Hey, look whose shoes we got. Got his ass lacking. Come on, bro. Got his ass lacking. Hey, oh, we on his ass. Come on, bro. Take his glasses off. Ah! <laughs> bitch. I'm not who I say I'm on the internet. I'll never step foot in Chicago or O-Block ever again. Trey is my father. I am Trey's bitch. Trey runs me. Everyone goes up to Trey from the O on YouTube. My mom's a bitch, my dad's a bitch, I'm a bitch, everyone in my family's a bitch, and I'm sorry to everyone who are offended on the internet, I'm not who I say I am, I'm not a gangster, I'm not hood, I'm a pussy IRL, and I'm not about shit, I'm sorry guys, I'm 
trade fish. Neon's fans made it clear that they were not buying this story and left countless comments calling him out on his pathetic video, pointing out the inaccuracies and proving that the video was fake. Regardless of the authenticity of the video, it had famous people talking about Neon more and more. And as much as the internet could have predicted Neon going off on Andrew a second time, he did what a lot of people speculated and actually took him up on the offer. This finally begun to shift the perception from some people and actually got him some comments supporting his decision. He shaved his head and listened to Aiden as he pledged to adopt the new lifestyle. It's me, myself, and I, like always, bro. It's me, myself, and I. No one wanted to help me do this, bro. Me, myself, and I, chat. Yeah, I agree with that. Wait, so, wait, no more gambling? No more degeneracy as a whole. I just think no more degeneracy. It's time to live up to your religion, to the Muslim, you know, the, the community of the Muslim, the Muslim community. You're right. Shout out to the Muslims, by the way. All right, continue. Thank you, oh God. I love you too, bro. bro. Hey, I, 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 I lock it as it lasts more than two weeks. Goodbye. He just said it won't last more than two weeks. This comment left by Aiden predicted the near future as two days later, Neon was on stream, seen acting his old ways. Why are you wearing a full red outfit? Because <laughs> I like the color red. Is there a problem? The Chinese guy's wearing red too. Look at him. <laughs> no, I didn't do it on purpose. You didn't give a fuck enough to do that on purpose. I like the color red, bro. He said you're trying as we all could have predicted, this wasn't a slip up, and he indeed was back to business as usual. But yet again, with his newfound clout, he was able to collaborate with streamers like FoosyTube, RiceGum, and more. As things seemed to have peaked with his antics, Neon was pulling back his aggression and becoming more mellow. Still being himself, but laid back version. Getting into further antics, but nothing even close to the things he was up to just a few months previously. Things were pretty relaxed, all things considered. Neon had got himself a girlfriend, but in all honesty, she got him. What I mean by this is that clearly, any pretty girl with a big, perky personality was going to be able to look at Neon's general direction, and he was hers. Sam Frank was that girl. She had an OnlyFans, saw the opportunity for mass exposure and promotion, and pretty much teamed up with Neon. They would go to make lots of content together, with her showing up in um, almost the majority of all of his streams. From that point forward, Neon introduced her with this post. Neon finally gets Why a Why do you always look so happy to see me? Okay, all right. All right. All right, let's see. I will. Bye. Yo. Yeah. Yo, look at. Yo, look at. Look at. That's just not what. Let's go where? Jack Doherty is a character who deserves an entire video of his own, so I'll just do that in the near future and assume that you know who this square head baby face man child is. I almost exclusively try to give you an unbiased description of people regardless of their reputation and I think I did a pretty good job there. Neon's next phase was streaming with Jack Doherty, masquerading around trying to instigate fights with random people in public, trying to make fun of people, aggressively approaching strangers, hiding behind his security when things got even the slightest bit real. Do you have like a fucking nose or something? Have a squeak or not? Uh, yeah. I'll do anything that your woman. I'm hood. I'm sure. I'm sure you hood. Yo, the yeah, I security here. I want you guys to apologize to Kami. Why? No. He did slap the shit. But he did slap the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that in right. my what? face again. I'm beating the f out of you. Yo, stop! Stop! Neon was following a very predictable pattern his entire time as a creator, and so was his audience, as every single time he faked and plotted a video, he didn't care that people knew it right away because he always gets views regardless. The deplorable lows that it takes for a person to repeatedly become the punching bag for a small boost in numbers is something we can all sit back and appreciate as the next thing Neon did is exactly just this. During one of Neon's streams, 
Neon was with his girlfriend in a van when some commotion happened off camera and seconds later they both returned, panicking and confused. This was reposted quickly by Drama Alert in a post titled Neon Robbed at Gunpoint on Stream. It is currently unknown if it was scripted or not. Newsflash, everybody including Drama Alert knew it was fake and they only even implied that there was an actual chance it could be real to spark engagement in the comments. It seems that Neon is so convinced people won't believe even a real situation at this point so he, as well as his girlfriend, stay on stream to milk the views and at points literally laugh and make fun of the supposed robbing. Bro in the back is either on some serious drugs or he is a really, really bad actor. Do you remember that OG YouTuber Vitaly? Yeah. He's still around doing pranks and he was up to his usual antics, but this time at the expense of Neon. And he showed up at the same event Neon and Sam were at, sporting full photos of Sam's OF pictures. His plan was to go up to Neon and ask for his autograph, and then flip the page, showing him the pictures of his girlfriend live on stream to a large audience to see if he could get a live reaction from the squeaker himself. Chat, you know who this is! By the look on Neon's face, this was a lot to process, and he went on to fend the honor of his girlfriend, but just in the nick of time, his security guard jumps in and saves the sad kid. This is where it took a turn for, well, check this out. Vitaly is a man who's put himself through the ringer. Spitting on someone is extremely disrespectful, but it takes a man that's been in the trenches to look at her dead in the eye and lick that spit up. This is so absolutely disgusting and quite funny as Neon instantly feels tough as he stands behind his guard as his girlfriend threw the only real shot. This is a new level for Neon considering the clout he got, but what's funny is that Vitaly went on to post a video meeting up with a person that Sam had slapped previously to egg on the situation. Weirdly, after all of this, Vitaly posted a video of him calling the cops on Sam after she spit on him, even showing up to the police station, which actually led to the police stopping Neon's van and demanding Sam out of the vehicle. You're not worth shit either. You're a three hundred thousand dollar lawsuit, brother. Three hundred thousand dollar lawsuit, brother. It was only a matter of time before Sam was done with Neon. After all, if not to Neon, then to the rest of the world, it was extremely obvious why she was there in the first place. Neon went on to post a broken heart emoji, and soon after, the internet was dogging on him for not seeing the forest for the trees. Neon confirmed in a video that the breakup was real, and for once, people believed him. It is what it is. Um. All good things come to an end, so, you know, um, I didn't expect it. I don't think anyone really did, you know, it was something that just didn't work out. I guess wrong place, wrong time. I don't know what it is, but everything happens for a reason. And yeah, y'all can call me a loser or anything, but I genuinely still love her a lot. So cry, I will. I will go cry. I will. I will. I genuinely will. On God, I will. It's cool. I will go cry. I'll go cry. 
I'll go, into, I'll go by myself and cry with fucking snaggy mom. I don't care, bro. I'm not gonna cry on camera. What am I, a pussy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. I'm just gonna throw this in here also because it makes me laugh. Do you have any tips for guys like Neon who might be struggling in the bedroom? Dump the fuck. Well, I don't know. He's probably a twink. I, I say you go to the gym and you tie a five pound dumbbell to your and you lift and you lift your calves and you stretch it out that's how i've been practicing neon went on to make more videos after this as regular some with sneeko but more importantly he had lost his really good friend aiden ross apparently he had told some secrets to sam about aiden that really he should not have told her and he lost his trust and his friendship at that point yo who is that No, 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 this is cool. In front of what? You guys already know where the f I stand on that. Jew is weird, L Jew. Yeah, bro, so now that you broke up with this girl, I'm just, I'm just supposed to accept them into my arms, right? <laughs> like, like y'all are f***ing stupid as No, that's not how it works. Damage been done. She even said to her that she already knows so much about me, bro. <laughs> I'm not even speaking on it. Just leave me the f alone, bro. All my secrets, all my group secrets and shit, they know every- I'm, I'm not- <laughs> I'm good off that, bro. Let's not even talk about it, please. <laughs> I'm so good off that. Can we get a rare Aiden W in the chat? This is extremely important because Aiden has massive pull being part owner of Kick, which is now the only platform that is willing to host Neon's content. It was quiet for a while until the internet drama channels picked up the fact that Neon and Sneeko were on the way to the UFC event when Neon said some things that were on par with typical Neon behavior. I'm gonna walk up, um, you know, I'm gonna talk my shit to Trump, and then um, it's gonna be a very good experience. And I'm gonna talk my shit. I don't care if the Secret Service is there, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna talk shit. So. Neon's not allowed in. What? They used, they dropped your name specifically. Huh? They just dropped your name specifically, bro. They said Neon is not allowed in. In the Dana White, who I'm sure you know, president of the UFC, took a massive offense to this and took it upon himself to personally ban Neon from entering the stadium that the event was being held the arena at. tonight, specifically by... He by said he was banned from the arena? No, what happened is he, he said some stupid shit on Instagram and, uh, you know, he, he bought tickets so he wasn't anywhere close. When you start saying stupid shit like that, yeah, you're probably going to get busted up and thrown out of here, you know, making threats and talking dumb shit, looking for clout. I believe he said he was going to... I don't care what he said. I think he said he was going to confront Donald Trump. Is what I don't care what he said. Did he? Well, he wasn't able to. He's just fucking tall, too. You know that? Fucking punk. I mean, I think that's to be expected after Neon said he wanted to talk his shit to a former president of the United States, but man, Sneeko did not appreciate Neon's antics. Just look at his face when they gave the news that they can't get into the stadium. It looks to me like Dana White sees exactly what Neon is all about, and instead of knowingly playing into the antics of a lol cow, he just sees the BS from a mile away and puts an end to it right then and there. I'm not too sure if Neon has this little voice, you know? The little voice that lets you know when something is just a little bit too extreme. I mean, we've all been there, testing the limits of how far we can push something, and then we get that little voice that reminds us of the consequences of our actions that can transpire if we continue to push the envelope. One has to wonder if Neon gets lost in the character he plays, or if he really just doesn't realize the outcome of his words that could transpire into crazy actions. I mean, personally, I don't think Neon wants to be banned from famous places by famous people. I don't think he wants to lose friendships with rich people who can open doors for him. So to a certain extent, I actually think that Neon rages with the intent of going viral without a thought in the world about the ramifications and then deals with whatever aftermath he's presented with. I do have to give him a little bit of respect though for one thing. The dude can sure believe in his own lies to get over a situation quickly. As Albert Einstein said, any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. And I think this this fits Sneeko's situation perfectly. For Neon standards, things were actually pretty silent. Besides his outrageous streams, which I could pull examples up all day of, there just wasn't any real internet drama headlining news about him. And then just a few days ago as of posting this video, Drama Alert posted this video showing Neon getting banned after Neon was at a random webcam chat website that links you with a random stranger and lets you talk. Neon connected with this random kid and things got a little heated, quickly throwing multiple deplorable insults at one another. Fuck. I tried to be nice to you, bro. Fuck, fuck the fuck up. I'll beat the shit out of you and your fat girlfriend, bro. What the fuck? That fat slut. 
I'll smack her in her face too, bitch. In a situation like this, you can't, and quite literally legally, can't hold the kid responsible for the things he says. And so it was up to Neon to be the more mature person, but in Neon fashion, he did this instead. And oh god, I'm about to dox your entire family. What's your name? I'm not doing shit. Shut What's the fuck up. Suck my dick, bro. You a bitch. What's your name? What's your name? You fucking pussy. What's your name? Kizzy, bro. My name's Kizzy. It says what's your, it in my what's your name, first bro. Name? All I need is your first name. I don't care. I'm an internet warrior. What's your name? What's your, what's your first name, bitch? What's your first name, bitch? Tell me your first name, pussy. I'll, I'll give you Miami. I don't give a fuck. You're 10 years old. I'll fuck I'll you in the ass until you fucking bleed, bitch. I swear to God. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Yes, you heard Neon correctly. He threatened to dox and then physically harm the kid in a very threatening tone. And man, we know Kick is a platform you go to when other platforms refuse to host your content. Kick is that place you go to when you're given that one last chance and the requirements for you to exist are extremely low. I think that we are all wondering what to think with Kick, and this was a clear move by Kick to show that they indeed have a line to cross that will indeed earn you the dreaded 404 message. But a lot of people were skeptical because Kick themselves proved that they let some pretty illegal things go unchecked or mm, lightly punished, essentially providing some of its creators a place they can go to to do these deplorable acts. Here's a clip of Charlie giving his take on the ban situation. Charlie has extensive knowledge in the back end of these streaming platforms, so I think his opinion is as valid as they get when it comes to this situation. When Kick does ban someone, it's extraordinarily rare, and when it happens, it shocks the internet, you know, more so than if aliens had invaded the planet. And every single time, people are under this impression that it's some kind of permaban, like, look, Kick finally did something about this dumb asshole. And every single time, I have to explain that it's just going to be a temporary ban, like 24 hours, 72 hours, something like that. Like, Kick does not permanently ban anyone. You can probably deduce from Charlie's video that Neon got his account back. Are you really surprised? Neon is showing the newer, younger generation that disrespectful behavior, instead of going punished, is actually rewarded with exposure if you do it right. And to an extent, Neon has proven this to be true. He leaves out some crucial ingredients to the recipes, like how you need to be extremely lucky early on. It's safe to say kids nowadays are going to try and replicate Neon's backhanded success on the internet, and it goes without saying that this will do much more harm than good. I think that people like Neon have their place in society. It's not new to have people that test the limits of others, and I think that the rise of the internet popularity coupled with the newer shifting way people consume content has enabled Neon to become an outlet for others to watch in shock and awe. It's kind of like going to watch that jackass movie in the early 2000s. Just seeing those guys hurt their bodies satisfied our need for adrenaline. And I think Neon does the very same thing for his audience. I mean, just like watching Shameless, it makes you feel better about yourself. And when you can see others being a POS, it makes you realize that you're not quite that much of a POS. Watching Neon Gross account purely off rage bait, fake videos and lies has been a spectacle for all of us to watch, and the irony in Neon's streaming career is that nobody has fallen for his pranks, bought his lies, and nobody has believed his sob stories, yet somehow he made headlines as if everyone believed it. Other creators in a similar niche as Neon have had to work super hard to maintain that their videos are real, and when their followers found out that their videos were faked, they lost relevancy and trust in the community. But in Neon's case, every cancellation made him more and more known to the public eye. People watch Neon to feel better about themselves, and with all the evidence that Neon can't be trusted easily available on the internet for anybody to see and find, I don't feel bad for anybody who lets this man-child slither their way into their lives. I mean, I can understand why Sam did it. I can't agree morality-wise, but I can definitely understand why she did that. To be a viewer of Neon, or a person who only keeps up with the dramatic headlines of his career, I don't think anybody loses in this situation, even Neon. People can only be on the receiving end of hate for so long, and considering that Neon started as such a nice kid and made the decision to become a lol cow proves that this isn't the real him. Neon's plan to become rich off of hate has been a resounding success, and if you ask me, Neon is going to disappear one day, buy himself a mansion on an island, and finally let Rangesh Matama take the wheel. That is, if he doesn't do something that he can't come back from. I'll keep you posted.